Welcome to the SWAT Team's tutorial on frames. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on importing pictures to make stop motion animations. When taking pictures for your stop motion animation, you can use digital cameras, you can use the IPvo document cameras, or even using iPhones and mobile devices. So I'm going to be using the IPvo, and you can see I have my Scrabble board set up, and I'm just going to move these little guys bit by bit and take a picture. Now it's really important to notice that I'm moving them just a little bit before I take the picture because the shorter distance you move things, the smoother your animation will be. I like to set up three person groups for this because one person can be on the camera while the other two are moving things a little bit and you'll find out there's a natural way of doing this when they start clicking, moving, clicking, moving, clicking, moving and one person doesn't have to go back and forth to the computer all the time. So there are a couple features of this program, like the toolbars up here, we have the storyboard area, and we have options in the clip art library over here. For what we're doing today, I'm just going to add the pictures that I took before. So for me, this is kind of the power button that I like to use. In the frame button on the taskbar up top, if you go down, you can see all the features you can do. Add blank frames, add frames from a file, add multiple frames. It's what we want to do because we're going to add multiple pictures. But also you can add images like you've saved from Google, audio file, and text. So what we want to do right now is because I took multiple pictures for Scrabble, I'm going to add frames from a folder. Then I have to go find out where I took it because I took it with a document camera and made a folder. It's under Scrabble. When I click on it, there's no pictures there, but don't worry, they are there. So I'm going to open this, and this will take a while depending on how many pictures you actually took. An alternate way of doing that too is hitting the frame tab up here, and you can see you can also do a blank frame, frames from a file, or add frames from a folder right there. It's the same as using this button. I just like this one better because it has all the options that I want. And now that it's loading, you'll see all my pictures have popped in. The first one's blank, so what I'll do is I'll click on that one. You can see how it's highlighted, and I'll just hit the delete and take that frame out. So you can do a frames list, but it just shows you the name of the picture. I prefer storyboard because it allows you to see all the frames I have. And you can see we have quite a few in there for the stop motion movie. Now, whenever you put in a picture, you're going to notice a couple things. One, you have the pictures on the side. You also have the frames on the bottom. And you'll notice too that you have a little time slider here. So right now, just throwing these pictures in without doing anything, I have a movie that's over 40 seconds long. But I hate to say it in the stop motion world, that's way too long. You'll notice that each frame has a certain time frame associated with that. And we find that over here, under the duration. Each frame naturally comes in at 0.5 seconds, which as I said, for me, that's way too long. So I can click on an individual frame, either way, on the bottom or up top, and I can go over here and I can change the duration of that frame. When you want to change it to make it longer, you might be adding some text or something else going on in the frame. But for my purposes, I'm probably going to make this shorter. Now, this is going to be based on your preference. What I like to do, as soon as I dump in all my pictures, I like to go change all the frames down to 0.2 seconds. So to do that quickly, I can go up to my edit button and I'm going to select all my frames at the same time. So whatever I do to one, it's going to affect all of them. And then I'll go over to my time slider and change the duration. Some people go all the way down to 0.1 second. I like to go to 0.2 because it lets me see mistakes that can occur. But this, as I said, will be your preference. So now you're noticing that my movie is actually only 16 seconds. Then I'll go in and rewind and play and just see what it looks like from the start. So you can see my swap moving out from all the pictures I did. You're going to find that you're going to be doing a lot of rewind, play, stopping, changing durations throughout the whole editing process. Now from here it's really choosing what you want to do with your movie. Some people are completely happy with the photography and when you play the movie it works well. I'm even going to select all my frames again and I'm going to back up the time duration to 0.1 just so you can see how smoother it looks when it goes faster. So I'll hit rewind and play and now you can see it moving a little bit better. But remember this is all in the photography job. So if you have long gaps between your photography, it's not going to look as smooth no matter how much you play with the time duration. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit your movie a little bit more by adding text, uh, movies, some clip art, and all kinds of different things.